Okay, uh, spill the beans, Linny. How'd you do it? How'd you do it? But if revealing our secrets will help you uncover the truth behind what happened, then it will be well worth it. Okay. This is the first Archon bus that I actually get to record. This is great. We should go somewhere else if we're going to discuss our magic tricks. We'll go speak with the guards, and in the meantime, you can go investigate the stage and the seating areas. Alright! Let's go have a look while the investigation teams are still here. Detective Paimon is on the case! Hi. Oh, I only needed to talk a little more and then I could... What's going on? Oh, Hello, hi. Hello, officer! How's the investigation going? We're Linny and Lynette's attorneys. No, we're not. We're pre we're pretend we're we're playing make believe. Ah, uh, I see. You must be the traveler that Lady Farina mentioned. Listen, I'll be perfectly honest with you. I'd avoid getting mixed up in this whirlpool of a mess if I were you. Well, we're already in it. We can't do anything. Huh? <coughs> what do you mean? Come with me and you'll see. Ooh. The deceased is one of Linny's assistants named Cal. Even though he hadn't joined the troop long, he was hardworking and everyone generally liked him. The assistants are usually in charge of setting up and inspecting the props, as well as assisting with the show and keeping the crowd engaged. As you probably saw when you were in the audience, the water tank suddenly fell and smashed the box with Cowell inside it. But why was Cowell inside? Wasn't the girl supposed to be in there? This is the real mystery. We've already searched the scene and were unable to find any traces of the girl. However, if you look carefully, the box was positioned directly under the water tank. The ropes holding the tank were then burned by the pyrotechnics on stage, causing them to snap. All these factors lining up so perfectly makes it hard to see this as a mere accident. Uh. If anything, the more logical explanation is that the whole incident was intentionally planned, and Linny is the most likely person to have access to all these areas. Yeah. Are you both good friends of his? We're fair friends. We've met y yesterday. Uh, well, you can't say we're good friends, but we've known each other for a little while. So in just a short time, he was not only able to win your trust, but even convince you to act as his attorneys. Damn! I know there's no such thing as magic. The real trick of a magician is holding the audience in the palm of their hand. I've seen a lot of cases, and I can tell you that people are the least reliable kind of evidence. That's true, but that's not always true. <laughs> it said that's true, but that's not always true. People can also be the most reliable evidence. Sorry, I tend to be pretty straightforward. Just know that I'm warning you for your own good. My good sir. I am literally already in it. Like, I can't... I can't be like, y'all, Linia. Good luck, bro. Anyway, you may investigate the scene of the crime yourselves if you're curious. Who knows, maybe you'll be able to come up with some new evidence. I don't know about that. Thank you, though. Holy shit, it's Ace Attorney. You can use the case record to confirm your current evidence and clue collection situation and sort case related information you can check as yet undiscovered evidence and clues in the case record then investigate the corresponding area to locate them have you done this before either <laughs> why is he so organized <laughs> use a perception skill to find evidence and clues that can be investigated within a certain radius around yourself this will advance your overall progress guards investigation report but, uh, the investigation for the guards indicates that the fireworks launched at the tail end of the magic performance set the rope dangling the water tank alight, causing the tank to fall and kill Cowell, who was within it. It seems evident that Linny was the likeliest user of the prop to commit a crime, however the reason for the victim being Cowell and the reason for the chosen lady's disappearance remains mystery. The deceased's identity. The deceased is one of Linny's assistants named Cowell. He was well trusted by all his colleagues. His job was setting up and inspecting the props, as well as assisting with the show and keeping the crowd engaged. Right. Yeah. 
Use perception. A detective in action. Ooh. Down in the white blood. This is where the magic box struck. If Kao weren't inside the box at the moment, he might have dodged the falling water tank. We don't know about that. Okay. Uh... Eat. Ooh, I like the music. Ah, oh, it's so Ace of Thirty. I hate it. The broken magic box was left on the scene after the guards completed their investigation. Looking at it now, the water tank must have struck it really hard. It's very heavy. Hi, sir. You good? Go ahead, have a look around. In the end, we're both after the truth. True. We are we are colleagues in this, sir. We are not enemies. Mm. So this is the rope that broke and caused the oh. water tank to fall. <laughs> look, I get the water. Who's this guy? Who's this guy sitting in the back? Bro, you're not supposed to be here. Hmm. The rope looks pretty durable. How can it be burned through so quickly by fireworks? So either Linny didn't realize this was a safety concern, or... Hmm? Why are you suddenly so serious, Traveler? I'm just looking at where the rope snapped, yeah. Woo! Traveler, big brain. I didn't know I'd have to be big brain here in Fontaine to... Look! This bit is made from different material! Most of it was burned away, but there's still a little bit of it left. It seems to be flammable, like a type of flash cotton. Huh. So if a rope meant to hold something was made with that kind of material in it, then that means... Wait, why don't you write all this down? Let's take notes. I've been. This rope was used to suspend the water tank. It suddenly broke when the fireworks were being launched on stage. The investigation has shown the location where the rope snapped was made of flammable material. I love your pen, Aether. It looks so nice. Also, let's talk to this guy up here. He's not supposed to be here. <coughs> uh, Isildur. Are you a are you a journalist, my good sir? I see that you're investigating the area. Well, it just so happens that I'm interested too. Are you allowed to be in here, sir? If you find any new and interesting leads, be sure to share them with me, all right? Who the fuck are you? We don't have too many thoughts yet. <laughs> then why don't I tell you my hypothesis first? The way I see it. And I'll start it with that loud thud. Okay. The thud? Oh, you mean the sound that happened during the countdown? Yes, exactly. It wasn't terribly loud, but I suspect that most people heard it. It's just that everyone was awaiting the results of Linny's trick with bated breath. So no one paid it much mind. But now that the incident okay. has happened, the thud has become an important clue. Are you? Who are you, sir? Makes sense. So, what do you make of it? I'm of the opinion that it may have been the sound of Linny's accomplice. Lynette, perhaps. Jumping atop the water tank, or something like that. And when the pyrotechnics went off, she cut the rope, sending the water tank crashing down. Uh... But, wasn't the noise we heard too loud for that? Perhaps the balance wasn't right, leading to a particularly rough landing. Then wouldn't the water tank have started to swing a bit in that case? Yeah. Oh, that's true. Hmm. I suppose I must reconsider. Hmm. That does remind Paimon, though. What was with that sound? Strange sound during the magic show. During the switching performance, there was an audible thump that many audience members heard. Eh? Okay. Sir? Oh yeah, this thing. Why is there a spot? 
It looks like an ordinary box, but Lenny somehow moved instantly from the stage to being inside of it. How did he do it? Oh. Hi guys. Went to the pod. The investigation team has some new findings. Turns out there's an issue with the random Ooh. number selector after all. Oof. See, I told you. What if the machine picked some big guy's seat? You think the murderer would have still made his move then? Uh. Sorry to interrupt, but we're helping Lenny and Lynette with their side of the investigation. What were you saying about the number selector? There's something wrong with it? You're trying to help them? <laughs> That'll be a tall order. We literally can't do anything about it anymore. I have been assigned. Lenny used the machine to pick a random member of the audience during his performance, right? The lucky girl that later disappeared. Well, we thought there might be a serious problem with the machine, so we had it taken away for further inspection. It turns out that the seat number it picked wasn't random at all. The machine picks that same number every Ooh. time. Hey? I'm sure you already know that you have to make a reservation in advance to get a seat, regardless of whether it's a trial or some performance. In other words, Linny knew who would be sitting where from the very beginning. I don't know about the very beginning, but... Hmm. That much checks out. Lenny reserved our seats for us, too. Bet you see why I was saying it'd be tough to make a case for Lenny. Yeah, say sorry for bothering you. I have a cold. Hmm. Even though it's bad for Lenny's case, Paimon had better write it down. Yeah, we should be objective. This device was used during Lenny's magic performance to choose a lucky number of the audience. However, the guards have found that it will generate the exact same number no matter what. Clearly, someone has tampered it. Okay. Well, sorry, Aether. Jesus, I'm blowing my nose. I'm sick of all these accusations against Liddy. <laughs> ah, I'm so funny. Uh -huh. huh. Okay. Oh, hello. <laughs> Maurice. Hello there. What are you investigating? Hmm. Oh. This location has also been cordoned off because the Magic Troop members are currently considered prime suspects. The investigation team is still collecting evidence. Okay. The seats were all booked in advance, so we were able to deduce the missing woman's identity by checking the guest list. Could you tell us who she is? We're Linny and Linny's... Lynette's attorneys. Sure. It's not like this is confidential information. We will publish it later anyway when we petition the public to help us find the missing person. Okay. Her name is Halsey. She's a painter from Fontaine who's made a bit of a name for herself. I'll see. Apparently, she wasn't a regular at the Opera House, but she'd been feeling some pressure with her work lately, which made her decide to come see the magic show. The magic troop members yeah. all claim not to know her, and we have looked into her social connections. It seems that she has no personal grievances or conflicts of interest with the suspects. Simply put, she wasn't related to the magic troop at all, which matches the features of the previous serial disappearances. Uh huh. Hmm. Were the victims of previous cases also chosen at random? Yeah. That's how it seems to us, in any case. Apart from the fact that they were all young women of around the same age range, there really weren't any other connections between them. They're not all like <sighs> famous or something. Okay then. Thanks for letting us know all this. No need to be so formal. If you do happen to see the missing girl, please be sure to contact us. Okay. It is of utmost importance that we get to the bottom of these disappearances. Yes. 
Information on about the missing lady's identity. Halsey is the missing person. She's a famous painter and came to watch the magic show in order to take a break from her own creative work. She isn't known to have been entangled in quarrels with any of the members of Linny's magic troupe. That's why she seems so nervous. She's not used to coming here. Okay. Maybe up on the... Uh... Maybe up on the uh copy. Can I go out long? Let me climb up here bro. Don't mind me. Oh I can. I this is so sad. Can I climb here? No, I can't. This is so sad. Ah I see. When he's still talking to the guards. It seems he'll have a lot of explaining to do. I think someone will be assigned to monitor us later, but that's all right. I love to. Oh. Hey, you! Yes, both of you! Over here! Huh? I've been keeping an eye on you for a while now. Hello, Navia? Huh? You mean us? No, no. The That's right. If I'm not mistaken, you're also among those who wish to cut down the thorns and pursue the truth. No? And by the looks of it, you're not from Fontaine. Yes. Well, you're right on the more about that one, but who are you? Uh-huh. I'm Taylor Swift. <laughs> Have you never heard of the Spina di Rosula? From mediating disputes and providing protection to solving conundrums, you name it, Spina di Rosula does it. Hey. And I, Navia, have the honor of being its renowned president. This is not the voice I expected from her, but okay. Well, those who play by our rules call me boss. Hey. Oh, she's very I'm pretty. I'm Silver, her attendant. Pleased to meet you. And this is gold. And I'm Melus. Demoiselle's various daily needs and affairs are under my purview. Huh? Boss? Demoiselle? What gives with the names? Uh. <clears throat> well, I am the second generation president. Melus and the others are still used to my previous title. My apologies, Demoiselle. Should you prefer, boss, I will endeavor to use that instead. No, no need. You don't have to call me boss. Just Navia is fine. He sounds so youthful. Okay, if you say so. Not that we're members of Spina di Rasula anyway. Girl. <laughs> All merely trifling details. Never mind. Now, back to the situation at hand. So you want to investigate as well? That's right. I've always kept an eye on the serial disappearance cases. My interest stems from a matter back from my father's time. Judging from the look of things, I find Linny an unlikely mastermind. Really? We think so too! That's why we're looking for clues now! But how did you come to that conclusion? Intuition, naturally. My unparalleled intuition. Uh, okay. Yeah, same, Aether. Farina sure was quick to point the finger at Linny without any decisive evidence whatsoever, wasn't she? Um, I don't know about that. Honestly, like... But that's not uncommon for her. If you remember, the Justice had to interrupt her and ask if she was pressing charges just to keep her from getting carried away. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, a trial begins the moment someone levels charges. And, of course, there was no way Farina was going to back down in that situation. Sounds more like you just don't trust the Hydro Archon. Ha! Oh my god. Me. Well, what's your opinion? I must admit that she can be interesting at times, but liking her doesn't mean that I'll blindly agree with her. Well, when you put it like that... Alright, I've answered your question. Okay. Now, it's time you answer mine. Why don't you have a nose? 
<laughs> oh wait, there it is. Wait a minute. Did that answer count? Ha 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 ha. Well, I say it does. But don't worry. You won't hear any pointless questions from me. Okay. In your opinion, do you think it's right to treat a trial like it's an opera? That... Uh... I... That's not really connected to this case. I want to answer your question for philosophical reasons, but I gotta defend my friend right now. Um... Well... Not always. Ah. And why would that be? I don't know. Doing so makes it easy for the truth to fall by the wayside. Something serious like a trial shouldn't be treated like entertainment. <laughs> See, Silver and Loose? I told you they'd be different. I mean, we're not from here, so... You know. Most astute of you, demoiselle. I too think that the Traveler's response was most excellent. No matter how wonderful the script or how fervent the audience's expectations may be, the trials that go on stage here must be based in fact. Then if that can be done, boss, then... Alright, that's quite enough, Maloos. Anyway, I like your answer. Mm -hmm. You'll pass with flying colors. Now, Ask I need what? to make some preparations, following which our joint investigation shall commence. Uh, you two shall be my assistants. I'm busy. Hey, since when do we become assistants? I'm busy, dog. Huh? Oh, uh, well, I can be the assistant. Sure. Or your companion, if you like. I'm really not that fussy. I already have a companion. Uh, that's more like it. Oh, I think you're missing the point, Paimon. Seems you've already agreed, then, lol. Far be it from me to brag, but I believe that Demoiselle's intuition will be instrumental in uncovering the truth. You wish to save a friend from false accusations, and we wish to unravel the disappearances. In this sense, our goals are aligned. This man's voice is so gravelly. Hmm, you have a point. <laughs> You're quite the talker, aren't you, mister? Why are you looking at me while you say that? You seem like you've got something on your mind. Ha! Ah, ha! Ah, I love this guy. Be funny. Where'd he get these shades from? I have nothing to add. Oh. Oh. Alrighty then. We'll be making some preparations first. Uh, just be sure to let us know if they start revealing Lenny's tricks. <laughs> Thanks! Okay. Hello. Speaking of that, I think magic shows would be very popular in Poisson. Poisson? I can see that. Hmm. Maybe I should try to learn some magic. If I could make things disappear, cleaning my room would be a cinch. <laughs> oh my god. You need not worry about such things, demoiselle. That falls under my duties. Oh. <laughs> right. Uh. Uh huh. Speaking of that, I think magic shows would be very popular in Poisson. Excuse me? I can see that. Hmm. Maybe I should try to learn some magic. If I could make things disappear, cleaning my room would be a cinch. <laughs> what the hell, guys? You need not worry about such things, demoiselle. Oh. <laughs> uh? Hey? Uh? Oh, Silver was the one who was speaking before, okay. Oh my god, I was going freaking insane. Okay, hello. Felicity, hello, Christine. Sorry, but no one can freely enter or exit the Opera House at the moment. If you wish to leave, you must register your identity with us first. Yes, hello. Uh, no, we're not leaving. We're representing Linny and Lynette as attorneys, so we're investigating the case. Were you always guarding this entrance? Yes! After the Chief Justice gave the order, everyone coming in or out must undergo a strict inspection. So, the missing girl couldn't have left from here. At least, not from that point on. 
Okay. How about during the show? Oh, I like her hair. I doubt there was much opportunity then, either. How can you be so sure, hmm? Uh... Oh. Well, because I was in charge of security near the entrance at that time. Uh -huh. I couldn't see Linny's performance from here, which was quite a shame. Just my luck. Just try a lot when somebody but died. Still, I did not abandon my post, and I stayed put no matter how loud the applause was. If someone had so much as even approached the door, I would have noticed it, let alone if they had tried to leave. Okay. We Melazines are good at that sort of thing, you know. I don't know. So, it's safe to say the girl couldn't have left through here. Okay. Cool. All right, thank you for your help. This will be useful info. I'm hurting myself. No one left the opera house during the magic show. And after the incident happened, only those who had their identities cleared by the guardians could be guards. Guardians. That's how Lenny's doing. We checked everything of note here at the performance venue. Hmm. Uh. My mom wonders how Lenny's discussion with the guards is going. Let's go see, shall we? Ooh, things are getting interesting, huh? What We're the? about to see how magic is made. Oh, oh. Okay. Understood. Then I will be going with you. Just so you're aware, I will be monitoring your actions and making notes as necessary. Very good. Thanks for being so agreeable. I'd pull a rose out of my hat as a gift for you if I could. You may spare the pleasantries. I'm just doing my job. Oh. You've arrived. Uh, who's this? Me? <laughs> I'm Spina de Rosula's guardian angel. If you've got a problem, I've got the firepower. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I got a little carried away there. Call me Navia. I'm a partner of theirs and will be helping investigate this whole situation. I'm surprised. And these are my companions. Would you mind if they join as well? I'm surprised they'll let just anybody like investigate. Like, what's going on here? Hmm? Fine by me. Oh, new helpers? I would be most grateful. Well, let's just say we're tagging along. It's not every day you I... get to see the secrets behind magic performed on such a large scale. So you're just here to... <laughs> I appreciate your kind interest. Come with me. We'll be heading below stage. Okay. Huh? Below stage? Yep. Yes, a world of secrets is hidden beneath this magic box, prepared specifically for this switcheroo trick. But before I reveal everything, you should have a look first. Notice anything strange here? I'm not trying to be dramatic. Remembering the details of a trick will help you understand the methods used to perform it more easily. Huh. Weren't there balloons yeah. and other decorations here? Where did all that go? Ah, good eye. That said, you're still far from discovering the answer. Oh, the back of the door isn't the same. Uh, the back? You mean the inside of the door? What's different about it? Paimon didn't notice anything. I also didn't notice anything, haha. <laughs> <laughs> Very good indeed. I thought you might not be able to catch that, given that you were sitting in the first row. The back of this door was patterned. Those patterns are now gone, replaced by a smooth wooden board. So, if you put two and two together, what do you get? Wait, does that mean there's another box inside this one? <laughs> exactly. Alright, let's go. I'll tell you how it works as we head down. Hey. Okay. Oh, so there was a passageway under the magic box! This passage linked the two boxes together. <laughs> I knew you'd figure out most of it as soon as you saw this place. The two magic boxes are positioned right above the two entrances of the tunnel. See this flatbed trolley? The box with the lucky audience member in it would be shuttled over to the other side using the trolley. 
This trolley can raise and lower and even rotate, ensuring that the box will face in the right direction. I see. So that's the purpose of the box inside another box. Precisely. The inner box would descend after the audience member was put inside and be moved along the trolley, all while the outer box would remain on stage as if nothing had ever changed. So that's how you did it! Once the box was lowered, the trolley would store some energy through this device here, with which it would complete the rest of the steps. The audience member would only be able to feel some slight movements in the dark, and by the time she walked out, she would already be back on stage. And what about your side of the trick? Right! You were talking that whole yeah. time! And you even came out for a moment near the end! Ah, yes. A phonograph operated by Lynette was used to achieve that effect. Ah. My assistant and I had already scripted our conversation beforehand. When the countdown began, I had already gone to the opposite box via a tunnel using that ladder. And what about Lynette? Where was she? I was in the mezzanine space in the back of the box. Oh, interesting! That's how we were able to coordinate Lenny's lines with the assistant. And, by the way, I was the one who walked out of the box at the end. Yeah. I mean, we are twins. All it takes is a change of clothes and no one can tell who's who. <laughs> and that's my favorite part of this trick. Only Lynette and I can perform it. So that's how it all worked! Wow! Every detail you revealed was more amazing than the last! I can tell a lot of thought was put into this. Lynette would briefly walk out of the box and then go back in, jumping into the tunnel and escaping before the box on the trolley could finish ascending. And then I walk out of the other box in the audience area, and the trick would be complete. The operative word here being would. Uh huh. But as you saw, Cal was in the box, not our audience member. She, on the other hand, mysteriously vanished. So we really don't know how yeah, that happened. It happened in here. If not for that interlude, this would have been an astonishing trick. I probably never would have figured out how you pulled it off. And yet, to think that someone was able to use this magic trick to commit a crime. Could we have a look around? I think we can come up with some more leads. This is the scene of the crime. So Linny and Lynette are not permitted to stay here. I'll escort them back up. Okay. Yes, of course. No need to be so strict now. I won't disappear into thin air, you know. Yeah, but you could tamper with evidence Thanks, later. Thanks, everyone. We're counting on you. Okay. Not saying he would, but, you know, that's just the line of reasoning here. The magic trick. Linny gave a detailed account of how the trick was supposed to work. By using a box inside a box, the idea was that the box containing the audience member to be transported across via a tunnel underneath, and Linny himself would also use his tunnel to get to the other side. Meanwhile, having changed her outfit, Lynette and her assistant would take charge of on-stage interaction. On-stage magic box structure. The magic box on stage has an additional layer to its rear, in which Lynette, in Linny's clothes, remained hidden. It would appear at the end of the magic trick and lead people to believe that Linny had been able to instantly move to the box on the other side. Audience side magic box structure. The magic box at the center of the audience stance has two layers and beneath it is an entrance to an underground tunnel. This was how the lucky audience member was meant to have been transported without the audience noticing. Control. Should be the control device for the trolley, it seems to be able to operate automatically. Examine ladder. A ladder is required in order to return to the magic box above. What's, What's this? this? Looks like a hook tied to the end of a rope. Huh? There's all kinds of odds and ends here. Lenny didn't mention this earlier. Perhaps it was a prop for a different trick. But why would it have been left here? 
Whatever it is, let's make a note of it first. A rope that has fallen to the ground. A metal hook has been tied to one end of this rope. Its use is under fear. Drop the hook rope. Okay. Bro, what is this nonsense? The floor is wet. Please be careful not to slip. Uh-huh. Speaking of which, why would there be water here? Maybe it was for a trick? Oh! Hi, my nose! It's one of those tricks where you pour water into a jug and then flip the jug over only for the water to disappear? And here's a broken vase! Huh. Did the trolley knock it down while moving? Uh... That can't be. The trolley moves along tracks from start to finish. It couldn't have hit the vase at this distance. Hmm. Let's note this down too and think about it later. Broken flower vase. There are many pieces of a broken flower vase on one side of the tunnel. All the water within has been spilled. Judging from the distance, it seems likely that it was knocked over by the trolley meant to transport the magic box. Unlikely. I thought it said it was likely. Nah. This, this. Clothing? Oh, these are the clothes that the lady chosen from the audience <gasps> was wearing, right? Naked? Her clothes are here, but she's nowhere to be found. Lenny didn't mention the guest having a wardrobe change. Right. And do you really need to do that if you're kidnapping them? Hi, Mon. There's this thing called... Ugh, this is so confusing. Paimon doesn't want to be a detective anymore. Lol. The swirly eyes. The clothes belonging to Halsey, the lady who went missing, were found in the tunnel. The reason for this remains unknown. Maybe she swapped her clothes out and then she pretended to be a person in the audience? To escape? Ooh. Oh, I I hope I don't like that because it implies something else. High precision is required to complete the magic show, and traps are perfect for making the trolley stay on its designated course. What is this? Seven storage box. All kinds of props and costumes are haphazardly stuffed inside. Ooh, it's a trolley. What is this place? Looks like a vent. It seems someone could fit through here. Yeah. Huh. Could this have been the suspect's escape route? Hmm, alone, perhaps. But if they had to pull another person with them, the space would be too narrow. That's true, that's true. She left willingly. But there are no other ways in or out of here. Other than those that go through the magic boxes. And Lenny and Lynette were in the two magic boxes. Oh, you're right! Let Paimon write that down. A tunnel vent looks like it could allow one person passage, barely. Leaving along with the missing lady seems an unrealistic prospect. Seems we're just about done investigating down here. Oh. The trolley is crucial for transporting the magic box to the other side. The culprit must have used this to execute their plan. Yes. Let's head back up. Well, I'm gonna leave it there for now. <laughs> 